You're in denial. <laughs> in denial. <laughs> so I like that video. First of all, it's this guy's kind of crazy. He has a couple of videos on YouTube, just him yelling about how much he hates Eves. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Did you hear him say like, this stands for everything that's wrong with this country? Yeah, I heard that. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly he has very strong strong feelings he really does if you go forward in the video uh you'll watch him take a hatchet to the side of a house and just like knock all the eaves out and then he's just like yelling as he does it of course <laughs> yeah. so i hope he's okay wherever he is i hope he's found peace I me hope too he's found peace me too um so hi i'm mary and I'm Isis. And we're the homegirls. And today we're talking about exterior insulation and finishing systems, also known as EFS or EFIS. What yes. is the right way to pronounce it? Do you know? Isn't it EFS? Nope, there's no right oh, way to pronounce it. Oh, it's it. like tomato, tomato. Yeah, I think it's regional because I've heard there's some people who will die on the pronunciation hill. Of course. Um, there's always those people. There's always those people who die on the pronunciation hill. Yeah. Uh, but I've heard both. I think it's, I really do think it's regional. Um, yeah, I guess it depends where you live. Yeah. And if you want to go back, we actually talk about Eves a little bit in our Stucco episode, which yeah, is in did. season one, yeah. where we interviewed Beth Harbison of Stucco Spec. And she actually talks about how she would have Eves on her house. Like she thinks it's the best type of exterior cladding. Yeah. Well, I'm going to agree to disagree. Yeah. But first, it's our season four premiere. I know. I That's can't our, believe it. Yeah. <laughs> it was a long time coming. <laughs> I can't even remember the last time we sat here. <laughs> it was before Christmas, maybe before Thanksgiving. It definitely was before Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's I been think. a long, we took a long break, but I think we deserved it. We did. Yeah. It, it, it's, a, it's stressful it sometimes. Is. Well, it's stressful because the uh, recording thing never worked let's just say it took us 40 minutes to yes. uh, set it up <laughs> before we could even begin recording this we had to like shut everything down and start all over again so uh this season has no theme unlike yeah, last no season theme. no theme this season we're back to our regularly scheduled program of randomness which is always something to be excited about yeah and uh let's go into eves or evis now i'm gonna say eves I'm gonna be whatever person. makes you yeah, happy whatever makes you happy <laughs> it's controversial so uh as i mentioned beth harbison said she thought it was the best type of exterior cladding and that's what she would use on her house and again i agree we're gonna agree to disagree on that one because i do not want to touch east with a 10-foot pole but i live in houston yeah you know if i live somewhere else yeah. maybe i'd be a little more like okay arizona with or something <laughs> yeah exactly to say eaves is a controversial form of exterior cladding would be an understatement Depending on where you live in the U.S., Eves might be the sighting of your, of your dreams or the sighting of your nightmares. I was I was happy to come up with that. That's sentence. a good. Yeah, I, I like that. that. Was a good one, yeah. <laughs> I like that. So, what is it exactly? It's basically foam board that's painted to look like stucco. Yes, that is the simplest definition it's of a, Eves. It's a stucco wannabe. It's a stucco wannabe. It wishes it were stucco. Um, but I'm going to let you cover yeah that section. So let's go into history. Do you think Eves was around, was invented by the Greeks and Romans? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it was. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> I feel like that's how we always go. start it. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, no, actually, it's pretty new. It was invented in Europe after the Second World War. Oh, well, that's pretty recent. Yeah, very recent. And so, as you know, Europe was really flattened during yeah. the Second World War. Uh, if you guys don't know that, maybe just Google some pictures because, yeah, it's pretty bad. It was pretty bad. Yeah. Um, and basically, they had to rebuild all these buildings, and they wanted to rebuild the buildings in their original form. So a lot of times, if you go to Germany today, you'll go to these beautiful medieval towns, and they're not medieval. They're from after the Second World War. They just reconstructed it to look medieval Yeah. because they wanted to keep the culture of their towns. Um, and part of that was Eves. They needed a something that looked like uh, stucco or wattle and daub, um, and they needed to be able to use it quickly Yeah, because they were trying to rebuild. Um, in fact, if you go to Europe today, you really can't ever tell that any of it was flattened, which I find to be really... That's impressive. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it, when you think about it, it's 2022, and the Second World War ended in 45. I mean, they could very easily have still just left things you yeah know. taking but no, their time with it you know yeah they're rebuilding the fruit flies they're back yes <laughs> well, we also have fruit flies in our studio today uh they will not Special be speaking guests. yeah uh, they, will, they will not be speaking though um 
But anyway, they needed something to help them rebuild quickly. And that's where Eves comes in. Um, it comes over to the United States in the 1960s. And I believe it, what I saw was 1969 as the exact year. I'm not sure that really is the exact year. I like to say 1960s in general. Hold on. My mic is bothering me. There we go. Um, but the estimated when we really start seeing it in the United States is 1969 and it's being used for commercial purposes only in the United States. So not residential, not just. residential. We start to see it in the uh, residential market, primarily Southern suburban and vacation properties in the 1980s. So prior to that, it was really mostly commercial. Um, and it comes into the residential market in the eighties as the notes say primary Southern suburban. So that means under the Mason-Dixon line, I guess. In 1991, there was a massive recession in commercial real estate. And uh, that's where EFS really fell out of favor with commercial. And then they kind of revered their marketing tactic to residential. Okay. However, it turns out, you know, in the 1980s, you get kind of some residential EFS. 1991, it really explodes. However, at that point, they start realizing that something's going on. Something yeah. is going on with this Eves. Oh, the houses no. that were built, this is in the United States. Uh, so we're out of Europe now, in the United States only. Okay. We're starting to leak badly. And when Eves leaks, it rots the house much quicker than stucco does. Okay. And we'll look at some pictures. So the consequences are, they, are, are worse. <laughs> yes. If it isn't the consequences of your own actions, Eves. 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 <laughs> um, and it leads to something that we call the leaky condo crisis. The leaky condo crisis. The leaky crisis. condo crisis, oh, no. yes. And this, I believe, happens in Canada. Yes, it is in Vancouver and coastal British Columbia. And it's an ongoing construction, financial, and legal crisis. And it primarily involves multi-unit condos, buildings, damaged by rainwater infiltration because of eaves. So these were um, residential condos, not apartments. And essentially, it was a massive lawsuit because of the EFs. Now, it really started, uh, these condos started leaking in the 1980s. And it wasn't until, um, I'm trying to find the exact date. It's in my notes somewhere. It just keeps saying 1980s for the leaky condo. Okay, so the condo started leaking in the 80s. It's not until 1998 that the provincial, because Canada has provinces, not states, that the provincial government does the research and finds, or does their full investigation and finds that it's the EFs. And I want to mention, this is ongoing. So the lawsuit is still going. To this day? To this day. Oh my God. The leaky condo crisis is ongoing. However, it is this leaky condo crisis that kind of brings the issues with EFs to the forefront. And actually gets yanked off the market in oh. the United States and in Canada. Ooh. So although the leaky condo crisis is still all going, it was one of the big factors of why. They um, took it off. Yes, they took it off the market. So actually, Eves disappears after 1998. So at some point oh. in the late zeros, we're in the 2000s now, late zeros, early tens, Eves comes back. So it hasn't even been back that long. No, it it's hasn't like even. 10 years. And I was looking for an exact date when they re-release EFs, and I couldn't find it. Uh, you probably noticed none of these dates are exact for EFs. No, it's just like 80s. It's or... like there was a time before EFs and a time after EFs, but no real like definition yeah. of when we start using. Um, ex- you know, like I mentioned, they started after the World, w- World War II. Well, that's kind of vague. You it know, is very vague. It yeah. moved to the United States in the 60s. Possibly 1969. It moved to residential in the 80s. It, in 1991, it really went into residential. And then by 1998, approximately, it's out of residential. So all of this timeline is approximate because clearly no one was keeping any records. They were just these. going. Yeah, <laughs> they were that's just why doing. I'm like stumbling with my notes so badly because it's all just hypotheticals. Yeah. yeah, it's like, I feel like Eves is also one of those topics that's like, it's just hard to find it's hard. a lot of information about. Because it, it's hard to find information about. It's hard to explain unless you see it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Cause it's, unless you've touched it. Yeah, or knock on it. Or- yeah. Um, so basically, we have a new improved Eves that's being used on houses now. Um and it's becoming more and more popular here in Houston. Like I said, if you live in other parts of the United States, you might see more EFs. Yeah. Here, um, 
we see, we do see eaves on residential. Usually it's in, uh, how do I want to say accents, accent pieces, like coins on the side of the house. You know what coins are, right? No. So coinage is when they have, you know, on the side of the garages, they have those like decorative blocks that like stick out the side. Yeah. That's called coining. Okay. Um, so those and, little, just little pieces. Yeah. Little pieces. Also, sometimes the stucco houses, you see, they have like windows that are like surrounded by looks like stucco. Yeah. That's usually eaves because okay. they can mold it, you know, because yeah. it's foam. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So that is the very poorly constructed history of Eves. I mean, I think it's pretty good for considering, considering the circumstances. Basically, there was a time before Eves, there was a time after Eves, and there is now. Yes. New and improved Eves. <laughs> Hypothetically new and improved Eves. Yeah. I keep saying that. Let's talk about. All right. I'll talk, talk a little bit more about it, um, what it is, what it's made of, and how it's applied. I found a nice little graph uh, or like, <laughs> you know, like little picture <laughs> but so eaves we know it stands for exterior insulation finish systems yeah. generally consists of some rigid insulation boards placed on the wall uh, on the wall sheathing exterior eaves are designed to work with several different substrates including wood cement and masonry um yeah so today eaves is highly preferred by architects and builders looking to offer continuous insulation for homes built in areas with strict energy codes um, yeah. And I'll actually talk about that a again. little bit more. Yeah. Eves has a really high R rating. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So Eves are considered a uh, non-load bearing and exterior wall cladding systems made up of insulation boards sub subsequently fastened either adhesively or mechanically to the substrate. I feel like I'm speaking an alien language. So the big thing <laughs> to remember for the application process is Eaves is not a blanket word for one type of material. Yeah, there's different, there's yeah, different, there's different kinds. So yeah, like, so yeah. the application process will be different depending on which manufacturer. Okay, yeah, because because it did say like it could be wood or cement or whatever. Well, no, or so, that's like what they put it on, or well, yeah, that's what okay. they put it on. So what I'm talking about is like you have to buy the foam product, mm -hmm. and there's different manufacturers who make the foam product. Oh, okay. So okay. based upon who the manufacturer is, it's different. Is how it's going to be. It installed. depends who you're like buying it from. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Eaves can be, econom uh, be an economical alternative to wood, brick, stucco, and other traditional finishes with the added benefits of lowered energy costs, um, expanded design options, and super or superior insulative properties. Um, when applied properly, Eaves will maintain its integrity and appearance for many years on any type of building. I don't think that's true. <laughs> but notice she said when applied properly. Yeah, that's nice. I was like, when applied properly applied properly <laughs> yes with no kind of catastrophic so it's foam right yeah so what much if someone hits foam. the wall and punches through the wall yeah it depends on the circumstance yeah you know like what if you hit it with the lawnmower if, if, if it remains untouched, untouched and applied properly then it will last but it's, as we know things never really go no, our way in not life. in houston anyway i know yeah houston especially houston especially the weather is just like it's actually like might be flooding right now yeah we, it's actually as we shoot this supposed podcast. to flood right now as we speak yeah <laughs> but yeah i feel like eaves is probably better in dry and in like dry environments and yes like, i would definitely the lower the humidity the better the eaves is gonna yeah. be yeah and if you're in houston you know humidity is never low <laughs> no it's not low <laughs> it's very bad um so how is it applied eaves typically consists of the following application process it could be different like mary said because it depends like we get it from and whatnot but basically a water resist a uh, resistive barrier is applied to and covers a wall a drainage plane between the uh water resist resistive barrier or wrb i guess is the acronym for it and the insulation board that is most commonly achieved with vertical ribbons of adhesive applied over the wrb um insulation board typically made of expanded polystyrene is that yes that's it? the plastic um commonly called foam yes yeah is secured with an adhesive or mechanically glass fiber reinforcing mesh embedded in the base coat and then a water resistant base coat is applied on top of the insulation to serve as a weather barrier <laughs> yes hypothetically and then you know the finish the finished coat, which yeah. looks like stucco. Yeah, it does look like stucco. So I want to add into the application process real yeah. quick. 
Remember in our stucco, this is a long time ago. So if you haven't listened to the stucco episode, go back to season one, listen to the stucco yeah, episode. Yeah, it's, it's an old one. It's been a while. Yeah. The weather has to be perfect. Yes. Even yes. to apply eaves. It still has to be perfect. The steps still have to be done in order, just like stucco. Um, and eaves is applied directly to the substrate. And what mm-hmm. that means is whatever the house is made of, like, yeah. you, like you said. Yeah. The moisture barrier that you put on eaves, I don't know if you saw this, it can either be building paper or actually a painted on moisture barrier. Interesting. It's like a liquid moisture <laughs> yeah. barrier. Yeah. Uh, and then the drainage plane is adhered. So sometimes, depending on the manufacturer, the drainage plane is in the foam already. Oh, okay. so if you saw pictures of like the foam with like those grooves in it. Yeah. That means that is the pre done. It's already like installed plane. in there. Yes. Okay. So sometimes they'll do a separate drainage plane and then st- install the foam. Sometimes it's just the foam with the drainage plane already in it. Yeah. Then you have um, the insulation board, the mesh, which is uh, very similar to the lathe, the metal lathe we're using in stucco. Very yeah. similar to that. And then you have a base prime coat sometimes it's a base prime coat together sometimes it's a separate base and prime coat and then you have the finish coat which was it the, looks like stucco yeah. okay it's um it is not stucco though i want to reiterate yes, it looks it is like not. stucco it is not it's not drying solid like stucco yeah when stucco dries it becomes the wall of your house yeah um when eaves drives it's just something adhered to the wall of your yeah, house it's essentially. just like glued on there and when we say foam, if you want to get an idea of what it feels like, you can go to Michael's or Joanne Fabric or Hobby Lobby and just go to like the science fair board section. Yeah. It's pretty much, that is usually a polystyrene. Oh my type. gosh. Yeah. Or even the packing foam they use if you buy furniture. The you little like, uh, peanuts or? No, like, you know, when you buy furniture and it's like that thick packing oh, foam okay, and okay. like you try to pick it up and it like breaks off in yeah. chunks. Okay, that, yeah, yeah. Sometimes that's a polystyrene. Oh, wow. So it gives you an idea of the type so of So I feel like then, yeah, it could get damaged very, so easily. Very like, easily. When you knock on um, eaves, it's very soft. Yeah. When you knock on stucco, it's, it's going to hurt yeah. your knuckles. Like if you were to punch it, you'd yes. probably hurt yourself. If you were to punch stucco, you'd probably get bloody knuckles. If you were to punch eaves, you might actually go through the wall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's That's good. Yeah. That so, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Was that it? Yeah, that's all that's I it. had. <laughs> yeah. See, as we mentioned, it's it's a hard it's, hard. it's, it's a hard. hard topic to research. Yeah, it's like either you find like a bunch of words that make no sense or, <laughs> <laughs> or it is hard to explain to laymen. And when I teach this class, I feel like I have to repeat myself over and over again because people are just like not getting it yeah you know no, yeah for sure um so remember in see it season one stuck i keep referring to this so i'm serious we're gonna give you like let's let's wait while they listen to that episode yeah it's it'll be helpful if you do listen to yes. that episode because like it'll make more sense it'll make more sense like dif- differentiate dif- differentiate yeah, yeah differentiating between the two yeah so we're i say pause here and then go listen to the episode and then we'll wait for you so okay did right. you listen? Did you like it? You're back. Uh, it good. <laughs> you see, you were a lot less polished in those early episodes, and the sound quality is not great. Yeah, because oh, we that's were, so true. Like, we were in a tin can. We so. worked with what we had. Yes, the good old days. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So in that episode, season one, stucco. You, I said, is it eaves or it's stucco? And I talked about the different things you could do if you approach the house. You don't know if it's eaves or it's stucco. What you could do to kind of figure out if it yeah. was. Um, so I'll repeat them real quick because I know not all of you stopped and went back and listened. I yeah, know. I, know. Sure. I know, I know, especially if you're in your car, I get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so first is the knock test. We talked about this. If yeah. you knock on eaves, it's going to be very soft. Stucco is going to be very hard. The gap test. So stucco or eaves is going to need a weep screed where the foundation meets the frame of the home. Mm-hmm. So when you go reach under there where the foundation meets the frame of the home, which is gross, watch out for spiders. Um, if yes. it's sticking out more than three fourth of an inch, it's probably eaves. Cause remember stucco when it dries kind of becomes the wall. Yeah. Whereas eaves is sticking out of the yeah, wall. So you'll just... be able to feel it kind of sticking okay. out. The next one is called the penetration test, which is gross. Um, <laughs> Not a big fan of the word penetration test. That's a little weird, but um, <laughs> it might have been weird because I made it weird, but I don't know. I think it's, it's okay. <laughs> um, basically, if, this is for new build particularly. Don't do this on a pre-existing, pre-standing house. But if you look at the holes where they're going to add the exterior lighting or the doorbells, mm-hmm. you can actually look in those pre-made holes. If you see foam, 
Oh, and so you could literally just see it in see there. See the foam, yeah. Okay. But this is for like newly newly houses. built homes. Yeah, there's not a lot standing between your foam and the weather. It's just that top coat. I feel like that is not good. <laughs> Especially here. That's bad. <laughs> no. So I want to point out obviously the Europeans invented it to quickly replace these buildings. But in the United States, we were using it as an alternative to stucco. Mm -hmm. So the United well, States yeah. is like, this is a better alternative to stucco. And I'm sure it's also like cheaper. Capitalism, baby. Right? Because if it's cheaper, if it's faster, if it's easier to put on, capitalism is going to be like, cha, we can make more money, build more mm -hmm. houses faster. Well, of course, when it gets yanked, they go back to traditional stucco. And it's some, kind of something they've kept. Uh, especially in Houston, you see a lot more traditional stucco than you do eaves. No, yeah. People sure. really did lose their house to rot, you know, and, and I'll show you some pictures of rot yeah. in just a second. Yeah. Uh, so what are the benefits of eaves? Uh, you kind of mentioned this. It's energy efficient. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It has a very high R value. And an R value, we usually think of R value in relation to um, insulation in our attic. Yeah. But the fact is you have R value everywhere. Anywhere you're putting insulation, so in your walls and your floors. Okay, so it's literally just it's around the whole anywhere house. Anywhere that's going to be insulated okay. it's going to have an R value. Putting eaves on uh, the exterior as an exterior cladding adds to the R value of a home. In fact, it's one of the best uh, for R value. So really, it kind of makes sense in Houston, right? Because we have very high energy bills. True. So True. <laughs> it would make sense to have eaves. Mm-hmm. Right, right. It would make sense. It could. It sounds like the perfect yes, solution. You exactly. know, it sounds like a dream come true. <laughs> it also doesn't require touch ups. It doesn't require control joints like stucco. So you can get that beautiful flat matte surface that people want from stucco, but you can't get it because you have to have control joints oh. on stucco. If you want to know what control joints is, please listen to the stucco episode in episode one. Yeah. Yeah. Can't, cannot a good, stress that enough. Good information in that episode. Um, it's fade resistant. You cannot hose it, uh, excuse me, you cannot power wash it though. What happens if you power wash foam? It's you will destroy like, it. <laughs> have you seen that gif of the raccoon with the cotton candy and he puts the cotton candy in the I water? Think so. That's what's going to happen. It's a bad idea. Bad idea. You will mess it up. And Google the gif of the raccoon putting cotton candy in yeah, water. It is foam, not it a is, wall. It will go away. <laughs> so just gently hose your stucco if you need to clean it out. Just so use some water. You yes. Know? They sell kits at Home Depot or Lowe's that you can attach to your hose. You can gentle oh, spray, nice. get rid of any mildew or something like that. Yeah. Is it, or algae. This is Houston. We get algae mm -hmm. on our houses. It's less likely to crack than stucco because it's foam. So it can expand and contract as the temperature changes. Okay. Um, it should not come off a house during a windstorm. So, okay. Let's leave that there. There are limitless Maybe. colors and textures because it's foam. You can shape it. And so we were mentioning like the accents on a house, yeah. accents around windows, it's very coining. flexible. Yes. You could even have eaves shaped to look like stone, right? Cause you can kind of put those oh, grooves yeah. in it. So, um, as far as architecturally, it is kind of a dream exterior cladding because you can make a look a house look however you want it you don't even make it look like stucco you yeah. can make it look however you want it yeah that's pretty cool though it's cool. fire resistant hypothetically and if installed Allegedly. correctly yeah this 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 sentence kills me if installed correctly it can be higher highly water resistant if okay, okay jan emphasis on if yeah <laughs> so um yeah but don't don't bet money on that. Yeah, I wouldn't. Especially if you're here yes. in Houston. Because like un yeah. unfortunately, EFS is rarely installed correctly. Just like just like stucco. Yep. And it, if it is installed correctly, it's still prone to damage. Why? Because um, it's foam. Just, yeah, just because it's, it's foam, straight yeah. up foam. It's uh, it not is, the most durable thing. <laughs> just you straight know? up foam. It's not like a piece of metal. <laughs> so if the foam board is exposed to any type of moisture... And that is heat and humidity included, not just rain. It can mold, rot, and deteriorate. So once again, raccoon, cotton candy. I actually should put that GIF in this class so people know yeah, what I'm talking about. Like you raccooning. It's actually really the... sad though. It makes me sad every time I watch it because he looks so upset. Poor raccoon. I know. They're so cute. Um, Eves also hates humidity, as we know. Not surprised. And carpenter ants and termites love Eves. 
Of course they do. Why? Weirdos. <laughs> why do you think they love Eves? Is it just like, I don't know. So imagine if you had to drill through a wood wall. Oh, just because it's easy it's to get easier, through? It's easier, yeah. Okay, just because it's, it's foam. It's foam. <laughs> so like okay. if you have to drill through wood and there's an they're, Eves, they're trying to get to the wood. Yeah. Okay. That so they're just like, oh, what if you have a brick home? They're like, oh, I got to like deal with the mortar. This is a termite. I don't know what termites think. But, <laughs> uh, but then they're like, wait, there's an Eves accent on this house. I'm going to just drill through the that. Eves and bam, Dang, I'm in. They're kind of smart. Yeah. So... That makes sense. I yeah. mean, Same literally, with carpenter we could probably just drill through it with our like finger yeah. <laughs> if we wanted to. Exactly. If you if you get angry enough, it's your eaves. So I'm going to show you some pictures of some rot. So this is, let me explain to you what's happening here. First, first tell everyone what you're looking at. It looks like a very decayed home. <laughs> 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 Lots of pieces missing. <laughs> Lots of pieces. So yeah. basically, this... Where the giant hole is, yeah. was the outside wall. What you're looking at here, that is the inside wall of the house. Yeah, you can see the, like... That's the markings. inside of the house. Jesus Christ! Yeah, it ate. It's like, almost to me looks like a canker or like an ulcer. Because it eats yeah. completely through the outside of the house all the way into the inside. So when they took the eaves off, there was nothing behind it. It was like you could see into the inside of the oh house. Oh my God. And look at the damage here on the frame of the home. That's so bad. It almost looks like a sunken ship, just like rotted yeah. completely through. So I have another picture here. Let's find it. Hold on. All right. What are you looking at here? Oh my goodness. Is there like a literal hole in the wall? That is a literal. Oh my God. So what we see here is a window. Yeah. And windows are prone to leaking. Yeah. We did a window episode, yeah, didn't we? we? Did. Yes. And I think that was season two. Yeah. Yeah. Go I think back it to is season, season two, two. Listen to the window episode. Lots of homework in this in this episode. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah. So <laughs> um, this is a window. And as we know, windows are prone to leaking. Yep. And because uh, there are holes in the wall. In this case, the exterior of the home was eaten away. The interior of the home was eaten away. And we actually can see the electrical connection. Yeah. Oh, you see the little, little you baby wires. You see right the wire. There. You see the electrical connection to whatever outlet must be underneath that window. That's scary. That's terrifying. <laughs> That's very scary. Not to mention the wood is so rotted. It looks really bad. It looks like if like it got flooded and it was just been sitting there forever. Like. <laughs> I mean, it's just like sitting in pieces. You can see where they see this white stuff here is that painted on moisture barrier I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So you can see when they just took the eaves off, it just crumbled. The the hole that just inside broke. and the outside of the house just crumbled. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's really no bad. joke. No joke there, my friends. It um, looks expensive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So let's talk about the inspection of Eves. Uh, obviously, this is for Texas, as I always mention. So yeah. definitely, if you're in another state, uh, check out what they do. But since Eves is a form of exterior cladding, it's located in Section 1 of the Trek Inspection Report. But remember that your Trek inspector can only do a visual inspection. If you are need a moisture inspection, so a more intrusive inspection, you would need to call a stucco or an Eves inspector. Yeah, They're not the same. Yes. Okay. Yes, and they're going to use the drill and the prongs and stuff like that. It's like more in depth. More in depth. Uh, when you have a home inspector, at least in the state of Texas, it is going to be a visual inspection only. Luckily with EFs, it's very easily to tell visually if, if something's wrong with it's it. falling apart. Because yeah. like they're, they are allowed to touch it. So if they touch it and it's like goop, it's like, yeah, you... You have a problem. Yeah. And same with the inside of the house. You're going to really start to see significant water damage inside of the house if the eaves is at the end of its life. Yeah. If the eaves is looking like what we just saw in the pictures. Yeah. So, yes, uh, same idea. They will drill a hole. If an eaves inspector or a stucco inspector is going to drill a hole in it, um, they're going to put a moisture meter in it, um, see how bad it is. Sometimes, of course, the eaves is so decayed, they don't even need to drill and then can just like stick the moisture oh meter. Oh, my God. Yeah. Terrifying. That's how you know it's bad. Yeah. Terrifying. Um, you really need to make sure your flashing is good when you have eaves or stucco or really any exterior cladding, right? You want to yeah. make sure your flashing is good. But the thing with eaves is any type of mistake where the flashing can get pulled away, that, if it's connected to your exterior cladding, could create a hole. Whole nother problem. And you don't need a big hole. 
You just need like a pinhole, right? Yeah. A pinhole. That's all it takes. A little hole is a little tiny hole. to start the process of bad things. <laughs> yes. So bad let's things. talk about remediation. Okay. I got eaves. It ate my house. What do I do? <laughs> it ate my house. So no. if the eaves is rotting, it has to be completely removed and replaced. There's just no coming back. Yeah, I doubt there's like... Ra- rac- cotton candy raccoon. It has disintegrated. Once it's, it's down bad, it's down bad. It's, yeah. <laughs> there's no resuscitation. It can be removed in patches, which is much better than stucco, oh. right? Because remember, stucco... Is like your whole wall. Yeah. I mean, if it's in between the control joints, go back then and they, listen to the episode. They got to go in there. They can just remove the control joints, but sometimes it's the whole wall. Yeah. Right? Um, so the total cost of remediation depends on how much damage has occurred to the structure of the home. So just Eve's replacement is usually 30 to $50 per square foot. And that does not include the cost of labor. And obviously that doesn't include any cosmetic damage. So expensive. It's expensive. Yeah. It is expensive. Now I have a video here. And we'll just explain to you what happens in this video. But basically, it shows them removing the eaves. And all they're doing is using a shovel in their hands to rip the eaves off. Oh, my gosh. Yes. It's that easy. Yes. He calls it a styrene palace. Oh, wow. (laughs) Yeah. Nice. Clearly, like, these YouTube videos are just full of angry people. (laughs) Mad about their eaves. Mad about the eaves. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, it shows the the remediation company removing the eaves and they're just using a shovel in their hands to pull it off the wall because it's what is it it's just it's foam yeah it's foam my friends if you only learn one thing today from listening to this podcast it's that eaves is is foam it's foam (laughs) it's just foam it's just straight up foam i have one more beautiful picture here again under a window yeah that one you see not so bad yeah it's not as bad but like but i like this because you can see how thin that foam yeah it's actually like i would I would have thought it would be thicker than that. It's literally like so thin. And so thin. It's It's like someone painted a science fair poster board and stuck it on the wall. Yeah. It's like they just glued it on the wall and then just like painted over it. Yep. So two things to remember. Eves is not stucco. Stucco is not Eves. Even though sometimes they call Eves synthetic stucco. They're not the same. Do not believe this propaganda. That's big Eves. That is big Eves in their propaganda. Um, They're lying. They are lying to you. Eves will never be stucco. It's, yeah. And while they both have their pros and cons, I would rather have a stucco house than an Eves house, at least in Houston, right? For I sure. was actually at a home in Kansas, um, in Wichita, Kansas, and it was all Eves. Oh. And uh, obviously their weather's a little bit different than ours, right? Yeah. Maybe a little bit drier. I really don't know. But the entire house was Eves. It had no control joints. So Chris and I were like, hmm, I'm going to tap it. And it was Eves. Wow. I know. That's crazy. I know the whole house did it look good or it looked good actually you know um these people were really wealthy they actually had a train like a little tiny like oh, kid wow. choo-choo yeah. through their whole yard that's wow oh, jesus yeah so that's kind of a random thing but i i feel like i needed to exp- yeah. to say that um so it sounds like it was nice <laughs> yeah so like in the inside of the house was nice so it's just it's weird you know, we were in Miami and there's a house there called Vizcaya and it's made out of coral limestone. Like it's built solid. Oh my gosh. You know? um, and it, Chris said, you know, they used to build houses to last. Like you used to build a house because you wanted it to, last to be a there long time. for your, your children. whole life, you know, yeah, like, your children, your children's children. Yeah. Pass it on, in. you know, and we don't build houses to last anymore. We just don't. And that's kind of where Eves... Trying to be quick with it. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of where Eves comes in. It's not an exterior cladding that's built to last. It is built to look good for maybe the five to 10 years you live in that house, and then you make it someone else's problem. It's so sad. I know. I sound jaded, don't I? <laughs> but Sad reality. I mean, look at this townhouse, right? It's not built to last. One good windstorm, this thing is sticks. So... Gotta love capitalism. Gotta love, yeah. <laughs> this has turned into a anarchist podcast. Uh, you hear that thing with Reddit anti-work, how it went down in flames? No, I didn't hear about it. Yeah, so there was an anti-work um, thing on Reddit. This has nothing to do with Eves, I apologize. But then someone who was a moderator on it did an interview on the news, and they bombed the interview so badly that um, Reddit took the whole anti-work thread down. Oh my God, that's so sad. I know. That guy's probably like, 
So I know, I know. And then of course there were just like all these forums about the interview. Trolling him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Reddit can get out of control really fast. Oh yeah. So Reddit is a whole nother war that zone. That is a whole nother <laughs> podcast for a whole nother day. So, uh, as I mentioned, two things to take away. Eves is not stucco. Stucco is not Eves. And I forget what the other thing was. So they're not the same. Yeah. They're not the same. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the credits. Intro credit. That was Kevin D. Blanche, that video we watched. That, uh, very and the name of the video, video. is Eve's Damage, so-called synthetic stucco damage on your home. Watch this. You are all in denial. That's the name I, of the video. I love it. I actually love it. Thank you so much. What's his name again? Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> the beginning, like, he's like, this is a... <laughs> he has, like, stuff in caps, too. That's he, literally the name of the you video. You can tell he is passionate about this. Yes. Okay? <laughs> yes. Um, our source credit is PIE Consulting and Engineering. It's called PI, but I don't think they're actually called PI. I think it's PIE. Um, yeah. Now, <laughs> I, now one's PI. Uh, check us out on YouTube at A Action Home Inspection Group Houston, on Facebook, and on Instagram at Home Inspector underscore Texas, and on TikTok at Houston Home Inspector. Yep. This is not an anarchist podcast, by the way. Yeah, that was a wondering. joke. Okay, That was a joke. Please don't take that <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Please don't. Okay. <laughs> We're not trying to get in trouble. <laughs> All right. Our next topic is decidedly less controversial, and that is fireplaces. Something nice and cozy. That one will be easier. Yes. <laughs> to get That one will be easier on. to research. There's a lot more history on oh, fireplaces. Yeah, I'm sure there is. I'm, I'm intrigued. Yeah. I'm intrigued. Yes than there is on Eve's. So uh, until then, I'm Mary. And I'm Isis. And we're the homegirls. And we will see you next time for Fireplaces. Yep. Yay.